thing as normal this, this week with prayer meetings and connect groups, everything as usual. Um, just to say that John went to see Sid yesterday at the hospital. Everyone knows he was quite poorly and his sons were absolutely thrilled because they said it's a miracle that he is just so well now and doing is amazing, isn't it? He's like totally turned around and they were like, it's a miracle that what's happened. So we're just really grateful for God touching Sid this week. And um, also have a notice here, change of date for the men's pool night. So the swimming, <laughs> um, pool night, Wednesday the 1st of February at Happy Landings at 6.30 onwards, um, 7 p.m. for competition. Okay. So don't forget that at the Happy Landings. That's Wednesday the 1st of February, so men's pool night. So I think if you want more information, see Tim, one of the guys. Um, also... Let's welcome Emily home. <laughs> it's so great to have Emily back from Cambodia, and it's gone so fast, and we really welcome you back. In the name of the Lord, it's, we've missed you, so <laughs> it's great to have you back with us. Okay, thank you. Yeah, amen. Get Bibles with you. Uh, Nam, Nam. <laughs> Psalm. It's one verse, uh, Psalm 92, and Psalm 92, verse 10, and we're going to read another verse in Deuteronomy. Just want to think of this phrase, uh, fresh oil. It's Psalm 92, and it's verse 10. It says, but my horn, you have ex... Is that right? We've got that, verse 10? Did I say that? Did I say that? Okay. Psalm 92, but yeah, Psalm 92, verse 10. But my horn, you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Now, if you want to go to, I suppose, forward to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. And you may be aware that Deuteronomy 28 is a chapter of curses and blessings. And verse 40, Deuteronomy 28, verse 40. It says, you shall have olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olives shall drop off. That's a kind of strange verse. Now, I want you to remember that part, that particular verse, speaks of, of, of the curse. And it's, it's actually referring to the fact that the reality is that, that because the curse was there, that the, there were kind of olive berries on the tree, but they couldn't use them to, for, for oil because there was no moisture in them. They were dropped on the floor. Uh, they weren't allowed to, to make olive oil. If they wanted them to use the oil from anything that dropped there to pick them. And it says part of the curse was the fact that the, the, the olives had fallen there's no oil in them, and so there was this curse because they couldn't produce oil, couldn't produce, if you like, the, the fresh oil that we're, we're talking about there in Psalm uh, 92, verse 10. Yeah, it's, it's true that I want to get aware of this this one. Sometimes that, and I've, I haven't been there yourself, sometimes we, we try to do things, sometimes in our own power and strength, and the truth is sometimes there's no anointing on it. No blessing, no favor on it. And we're struggling and striving to kind of make something happen. But the reality is there's no favor. There's no blessing. There's no, as we've seen here, no fresh oil upon it. And if we don't do things really from a, from a sense of anointing, from a sense of fresh oil, from a sense of his presence, it's not going to produce anything. Because it's not the way God ever meant it to happen. He's called us to, to, to be effective for him through his fresh anointing. Isn't that right? Through his power, through his presence. That's the only thing that really produces anything for God. I don't know if you've ever done that. I know I've done it at times, but have you ever tried to, to do something 
that God called you to do, if you, are, or you try something in ministry or something for God or anything else, you, you tried it, but there's no anointing on it, no sense of God's presence on it. It's horrible. It's horrible doing something out of a dry spirit. It's, it's horrible trying to do something without God's hand being upon it. it it's horrible. I've been there and, and I know how it feels. There's something, and you're struggling and you're striving and you're trying to tr push something. But the reality is there's no favor on it. There's no blessing on it. There's no fresh oil upon it. And it doesn't be productive. And so Emily can see why David cried out, anoint me with fresh oil. Truth is, unless we have fresh oil, then really it's just a form. It's just a religious form. It, we're just doing something in a form. It, it just becomes religious. No matter how, you know, how, how, how it seems outwardly, without the presence, without the fresh oil upon it, then the reality is it's just a religious form. And so David recognized the importance of this. He says, God, I need fresh oil. I need the anointing of God. How many feel that's, yeah, we need, we don't, we need the anointing of God. And he says, that fresh oil, really, it's like a, a wild ox. In other words, a wild ox is, is, is a picture. How many of you got, some of you got a unicorn. How many of you got a picture like a unicorn? I mean, for some of my thought, it's like, it's a picture of a, the Bible describes it as a wild beast, really, is a picture of strength. And what he's saying is this, unless I have fresh oil, then what I do, I do without the strength of God. How many realize we need the strength of God? And oil and the anointing really is that which brings the fresh oil of God upon it. And it strengthens us to do it because we can't do things in our own ability and power. So the fresh oil of God is the ability, is the strength of God to fulfill what he's called you to do. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know the priests? We're told the priests had a busy life. Daily, they would minister before the Lord seven times. Wow. Seven times they would minister before the Lord. That's awesome. Every day, daily, they would minister. You know, actually what we've been doing this morning, actually, is ministering before the Lord. That's what worship's about. It's, it's about ministering before him. Now, Notice this, the priests were not allowed to minister before the Lord unless they were, were anointed with oil. How many realize that? So you think, seven times they ministered, but every time they did it, they had to be anointed with oil, every single time. In other words, that they couldn't work for him, they couldn't minister to him unless they had fresh oil. It had to be fresh. They couldn't live off the oil, what they had before, the service before that. Every single time they ministered before him, it had to be the result of what? Fresh oil. They couldn't use what they had before. And we can see a beautiful picture here, that we can't really minister or worship or, or do anything effectively for God unless it's fresh oil we can't do it through yesterday's experience or yesterday's touch we need a fresh touch from god continually and constantly can you say amen and what would happen with the priest it would be smeared by the thumb on their heads every time they went in another priest would anoint them and he would smear them with oil you know the anointing actually means to be smeared with god I define it like this. It's God on flesh doing what only God could do. That's for ultimately, if you want to put it in simple terms, it's what the anointing is. It's been, the Greek word anoint means to dip. It means to smear. You know, when you put your, I say sun cream. I only got, I only know you're not putting sun cream on today, but the truth is this picture that you smear. It's God smearing you with a fresh, touch from him it's the touch of god the touch of god the fresh touch of god on your life it's, the, it's the, i think it's a fresh touch of god that that brings back your first love shakes us free from kind of lukewarmness constantly brings us into a fresh experience of jesus 
I don't think we can do anything, notice this, anything pleasing to God. We can please a lot of other things, but it's never pleasing to God. How many know, ultimately, it's about pleasing God, is that right? And the only thing that ever really pleases God is when we do what he's led us to do, and we do it through what? Fresh oil. That's what pleases God. That's what brings delight for him. It's doing it with the fresh touch of God. Allah. Wit, personality, talent, and ability will not do it. God can use it, but it has to be used by the fresh oil. I'm glad it's not based on that. Wouldn't it be sad if our ministry for God was based on how clever we were or how good our personalities was or how much charisma we had? That would be, wouldn't that be sad? But God takes the unlikeliest people and does amazing things for them, not because of them, but often in spite of them. Why? Because of the fresh touch of anointing. I constantly pray that for myself, Lord. Every time, God, fresh oil. And that's an awesome prayer to pray every day. Lord, fresh oil. For my work today, fresh oil. Whatever I do, God, fresh oil. And you'll be amazed as you kind of make that a, a cry, a yearning, a, a desire of your heart, that, that you're recognizing all that you do, you need fresh oil. You'll be amazed how God breaks through in your life. Can you say amen? Get another verse. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10 and, and verse 27. Again, a well-known scripture and a well-known verse. Verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that this burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. Notice this phrase. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the, what? Anointing oil. I love that. That word destroy there in the Hebrew means to demolish. It means to wipe out. It means to pulverize. I, I kind of like that. Kind of pulverize it. Crush it to powder, if you like. And I kind of think this. and That almost when there's a yoke in our life, when we're not seeing the victory that we really know we should be seeing in our life, when there's things that we, we just can't seem to overcome, we, we're, things that we think constantly struggle with, we can't seem to overcome them and defeat them, it's often a sign, if you like, that we're lacking fresh oil. Because what happens? The fresh oil of anointing shall what? Shall destroy the yoke. I think there can be all kinds of yokes that... People can find upon their shoulders. It's on your shoulders, I think, kind of, that, that limits your life, that binds your life, that restricts life. It can be all kinds of things. Sometimes it can be a religious yoke. What's a religious yoke? I think it's wrong way of thinking. You know, I was brought up in a kind of tradition that didn't believe in healing, didn't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That was a kind of tradition I was brought up in. And it became a kind of a religious mindset because it limited and restricted what that which God wanted to do. You know what I found? As I read through the scriptures, I kind of found out there's a lot of verses on healing. Isn't that right? There's a lot of, if you took away the miracles of Jesus, there weren't kind of a lot, lot left. Is that true? There's a lot of miracles, a lot of healings that seem to happen in the New Testament and even the Old Testament. There seemed to be a lot of operating work of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to relate religious mindsets, it's not what tradition tells us. It's not what kind of comes from the traditions of man. It comes down to this one thing. What does the Word of God say? And if we kind of base our hearts upon what the Word of God says, and there's a lot of mindsets and religious ideas that are going to, we're going to break free from. So there's yokes that can enable us. I think yokes of fear or yokes of inferiority and all kinds of yokes that can uh, grip our lives and limit us. That's what a yoke does. It limits, it restricts what you want to do. You can kind of put, you can define that, what that yoke is for you. That what holds you back, that what limits you. I kind of sometimes ask myself this question. If that yoke wasn't there, I wonder what you could do in life. 
that fear wasn't there, if that inferiority wasn't there, if that kind of kind of bondage wasn't there, maybe, or, or or that struggle with constant worry and anxiety wasn't there. I wonder how different life would be for you. The good news is this, listen, the anointing shall destroy that which limits and holds back your life. In other words, that when the fresh touch of God comes, something lifts. I've never found that. You know, suddenly you're full of worry, you're full of anxiety, fear's gripping you, and suddenly the fresh oil of God comes upon your life. And suddenly in a moment, that which you struggled with for a lot of years is broken in a moment. I've seen it happen time and time again, that the moment the fresh touch of God comes, yokes are destroyed and broken. Can you look at your own life? Look back, and can you see things that you struggled with for a lot of years? And you did everything you knew how to break it. But the moment God touched your life with a fresh anointing, it went in a moment. It was destroyed, annihilated, as if it's never been, amen? And God wants to continue to do that in our life. He wants to anoint you with fresh oil. So everything that hinders and limits your life is broken. The anointing. Notice this, the word shell. How many would say that's a pretty defining word? Shell. Not maybe, not can be, but it shall destroy the yoke. The anointing shall crush, annihilate, destroy the yoke. And I think of those yokes. I think people kind of struggle with and uh, things are stopping you, you know, distorting your view of yourself, controlling personalities, kind of making you out of control, causing people to waste their potential. In other words, a yoke and an anointing don't go together. You'll have one or the other. You've either got fresh oil and free of yokes, or you've got yokes and no fresh oil. One of the two. How many want fresh oil? I will anoint you with fresh oil. Now, I was thinking of oil. And this weird picture came to me, sardines. <laughs> Why do they put oil in sardines? I thought about it. I mean, it's the kind of question that you ask yourself a lot, isn't it? Why do they put oil in sardines? It's a sort of amazing, trivial question that people put. You know why they do it? It simply stops the friction of them rubbing themselves up and kind of, you, it'd be pretty dry and it'd be all broken up by the time you kind of got it. And that's why the oil's there. You know what I love about the fresh oil? It stops you being rubbed up the wrong way. <laughs> stops the friction. Stops you kind of getting kind of all worked up and all, you know, angry and mad. It, it, it kind of removes the friction. It's very hard to be kind of in a place of friction when there's fresh oil on your life. It's amazing how people tend not to get you rubbed up your own way when you're full of fresh oil. Is that true? But when you're not, you know, <laughs> you know things can kind of stir you, get you and offend you. It's almost when fresh oil is there, it kind of lifts the friction from your life. Let me say, I need a lot of fresh oil. <laughs> if you knew the people I deal with, I need fresh oil. Amen. Okay. If you knew my husband, you'd know how much fresh oil I need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Angie's laughing. <laughs> you know, what they did, they, I said, they, they, they would pick olives from, 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 they would pick the olives from the trees and they would crush them between these stones. And as they crush the, 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 the olive oil between them, and they'd only pick, they wouldn't pick the, you know, they wouldn't pick the rubbish ones. They'd find the greenest, maturest, fattest olives, and then they'd put them on these stones, and they'd have this kind of anvil, they'd turn it around, and these stones would come and they would crush the oil. They would crush the olives, and the oil would just wonderfully flow. And the reason why it would flow, the thing that made it pure, was the crushing of the olive berries. That's what made it fresh, was the crushing of it. Believe it or not, sometimes the crushings 
that we have through life have an amazing ability to produce oil and fresh oil from your life. I found this in my own life, that when I respond correctly to the difficulties, to disappointments, to hurts, to pains in life, if I keep my spirit right and I respond correctly to what I've gone through, I found those hard times and those difficult times actually have an ability to produce fresh oil in my life. So the crushing oil is produced. Isn't that awesome? It's, I mean, it's almost that when I keep my heart right and I keep my attitude right and I respond correctly to that trial, to that difficulty, to that what has risen against me, maybe not through my own fault, but it's kind of rose up and, and I've been hurt and disappointed and crushed by what's happened. If I keep my spirit and my heart right, the end result is this, I produce oil. And you'll find oil is produced far greater in your life through the difficulties, through the challenges, through the heartbreaks of life. You produce more oil that way than I think any other way. Isn't that wonderful? Through the crushing comes an amazing ability to flow. Some of the greatest men of God have been the people who have experienced the most crushing in life. Do you know that? I've never read a testimony of a man that's been used of God that didn't experience some crushing in their life. Every one of them. You can read them. Isn't it true? You read them in the Bible? Can you honestly think of people like Moses and these people who never had a problem in life? Every one of them had incredible crushings in life. I think of David. I mean, you imagine this. Can you imagine you've got these people that you've poured your life into and you've been with them for years and suddenly they experience a really bad experience and they turn around and say, you know what, let's kill him. You know, that's, that's not good. You know, that's, but the Bible says he strengthened himself and he ministered unto the Lord. In other words, through that experience, he learned to produce fresh oil. And I don't think there's ever an experience in life that can be wasted that God can't use. Because there's the point. Because through the crushing and the oil that you produce, the oil that God has produced through you, you begin to, to release that oil on somebody else who's gone through what you've gone through. That's why David says, God, when the crushing comes, give me fresh oil. Now, I want to see something. Imagine, you see, when we start complaining and moaning, you know, don't we say this, why me? You know, why does it always happen to me? Why me, Lord? And we kind of complain and moan and, and have a kind of bad attitude to what we're going through. God still loves us. We feel like the, the wheel is turned the other way. And the result is no oil is produced. No oil's produced. So our challenges, our difficulties, our problems are an incredible opportunities to produce fresh oil. I just love that. And how many sort of are willing to say, God, because sometimes we want the oil, but we're not willing to pay the price to do that which requires the production of the oil oil which means in the midst of difficulties and challenges and, and disappointments and heartbreaks we keep an attitude of praise we keep an attitude of trusting god let me show you a great verse it's one of these oh verses but it's a good verse 1 peter chapter 4 it's one of these uh, verses but it's a good verse 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Beloved, isn't that good? I, like, I, like, I even like the very first phrase that, be loved, be loved. Do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing had happened to you. Sometimes we go, you know, what? 
This is all strange. The Bible says, don't consider a strange thing. But what should you do? What, what, what should you do in the midst of your fiery trial? What should you do there? He says, but what? Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. What he's saying, he's saying through the hardship and the trial that you've gone through, it has potential to produce glory, which is the manifest presence of God in your life. In other words, God's looking for people who will stay on the tree, who don't quit until the victory comes. Because when they do that, oil will flow. I think the oil of compassion will flow. Oil of a greater depth of his presence would flow. All kinds of things flow out of you because You've been willing to go through the crushing, and out of it will come an incredible flow into your life. Oil will come from resisting temptation. It comes from when somebody treats you bad, you respond well. And out of that, this incredible flow would come, fresh oil. I suppose the question really is this this morning. Do we have fresh oil, or do we have stale oil you know an engine you know, an engine it needs after i know about three or four thousand miles needs to be changed we need an oil, you know you need an oil change because an engine can produce incredible heat and because of the heat the engine produces it tends to kind of thin the oil out in other words and that, if that continually happens your car just ceases. Every in the car just just ceases. No oil can cease the engine. The whole engine's broke down. The whole engine ceased. You know what you do from then? You push the car. You push it for a long way. And almost that can be a question, a, a, a picture sometimes of Christians, and I'm sure we've all been there at some point where we've been so busy doing things without our oil that eventually we burn out. We're just burnt out. Which means I'm pushing striving struggling because i got no fresh oil in my engine i'm just burnt out totally and utterly burnt out and i've come across them we've all at times i'm sure you've been up where you're just worn out you're weary you're worn down because we've not really allowed our lives to know the continually filling of fresh oil and we're just burnt out because an engine our lives cannot continue with our fresh oil. The trials, the problems, because life brings all kinds of things out of it. And we've got to have fresh oil to be able to cope with the challenge and the difficulties that we face. And unless we have that, there's a tendency for engines to burn out in life. You know what, you know what you do to keep your oil level going? You know what you do? Some of you, like, no, I'm not going to say this because it wouldn't be wrong. I was going to say to ladies, this might be a shock to you, but it is to me something. You have to use your dipstick. And then you put that dipstick in and you measure the level of your oil. It's a good way. Measure your fresh oil level. Have I really got a passion for Jesus? Have I got a, a real passion for worship? Have I got a, a yearning to win people for Jesus? You know, measure your 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 olive your, your your oil level how's it going if it's dropped maybe you need a oil change and you need the fresh oil of god to be poured into you because the oil level has kind of gone dangerously low and your engine is operating without fresh oil anoint me what with fresh oil let me maybe draw to a close of this next Turn to um, uh, Matthew 25. While you're turning there, I just love Isaiah 61. Think about this. Listen to what he says. For, the, for ashes, I will give you what? Beauty. I love this phrase. For mourning, I'll give you what? Oil. Of joy, I love this fact that you know ashes speak of, of where 
we've been burnt. Someone once said that the God doesn't remove the scars, but he, he, fo- he, he, he takes those scars, he pours oil upon them, and so those scars become finely tuned crystals in the life of a believer. I love it. And the oil of God is poured upon the, the areas of pain and hurt. And what was so, that what was just oil, what was just ashes and Things are just being burned up. Remember, you can't have ashes unless you've had a burning. Is that true? And so he says, where your life has been burnt and damaged and everything else, God pours the oil of God and changes the ashes into something incredibly beautiful. I've seen that time and time again, where people have had ashes in life, and as the oil of God has come upon those ashes, those bad experiences, what was so destructive, that was so bad, suddenly becomes one of the greatest strengths they have. It's beautiful. How many have seen testimonies of people? And as they share their testimony, what was so damaging and so heartbreaking suddenly becomes something of incredible beauty because the oil of God's been put upon it. Everyone notice what the oil is called? It's called the oil of what? Of joy. That's a good one. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's another good way to, to measure your oil level. What's your joy like? Because as the all comes into your life, I tell you, one characteristics will come, will be joy. The characteristics of the kingdom, God says, my kingdom is not a matter of food and drink, but it's love and joy and power in the Holy Ghost. That's a good fresh oil thing right there, joy. Now, Matthew, let me just close it. Matthew, Matthew 25. Matthew 25, well-known parable of Jesus. It's about a parable about oil. Matthew 25, verse 3. It says, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps here they were so busy with life but they never built up an adequate level of oil and suddenly they become aware of their lack of the substance of god in their lives and they knew it they needed the fresh oil of the holy spirit they realized they'd not given any time or attention to building a supply but we're told the wise virgins i remember the virgin there speaks of that which has been set apart for god they realized their spiritual lives were in danger of dimming out their influence waning so the quiet so the wise wise ones made acquiring of fresh oil a priority of their lives look in verse five And he says why they didn't have any oil. He says, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and they slept. If you like, they were asleep. And because they were asleep, they never got an adequate supply of oil. Ever thought of that? Ever had a dream and you're glad when you wake up? (laughs) Or you have other dreams that out with, you almost don't want to wake up. Everyone had an amazing dream. You know, that, wow, that was awesome. In other words, when you dream, it's as if in that subconscious mold, if you like, it's not real. And almost we can kind of spiritually sleep in life. That we live our lives sometimes asleep, not aware of our need for oil. That maybe... Our passion has kind of gone a little bit, and and we haven't got the same, you know, we haven't got the same enthusiasm that we had, and and just we, we become asleep. But suddenly, when you spiritually awake, it's as if your eyes become open. The great move of God in the 17th century was called this. It was called the the Great Awakening. People suddenly woke up to their spiritual condition, if you like. They suddenly realized and they woke up, you know. What's happened to our passion for Jesus? What's happened for our love for him? And they became awakened to their condition. And the moment they became awakened to it, they 
cried out, God, same fresh oil. We realize we're not where we should be. And there, there became an awakening. There became an awareness of their need of fresh oil. You see, they're saying this, oh, we want to reach people for you, Lord, but we can't do it in our strength. We need fresh oil. We want to worship you as we've never worshipped before, but we can't do it. We need fresh oil. We want to understand more of your word. Would you give us fresh oil to do it? And so there became a, a yearning, a, a, a desire in their hearts to do amazing things for God, but they realized that couldn't be achieved without fresh oil, and they were awakened to the need of that. And if we remain spiritually asleep, we never really are aware of the need that we have for fresh oil. And it says in kind of verse 8, it says, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, say, No, lest there should be not enough for us, but go rather to those who sell and buy it for your Sows. They were saying, give us some oil. We're having no impact. There's something missing in our lives. We need to have the reality of God moving and flowing in our lives. You know, we remember that moment when we were passionately in love with Jesus. We remember that moment when we just love to pray, we love to witness. But now things that used to excite us don't seem to excite us anymore. We need fresh oil. And here's the interesting thing. The wise could not transfer it to the foolish. You can't transfer heart preparation. Fresh oil only comes by each person paying their own price to have fresh oil. It comes from building a devotional life. It comes from going after God. It comes from living an obedient life, a committed life, a life of giving to him. And there was a time when the bridegroom had come and they'd been ready. In other words, there was a certain time when they were in that place and they were ready for it. But I only know you can't live on yesterday's experience. No matter how awesome, how wonderful that past touch of God is, you can't live off it. You gotta have it fresh right here, now, today, at this moment. Yesterday's gone. Things, the old things have gone. It's right here and now that really matters. This is this last verse. Well, two verses, verse 10. It says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Now, in other words, they're saying, doors often speak to doors of opportunity. Doors of opportunity. In other words, it says, see, when we're not filled with fresh oil, we miss doors of opportunity in life. People that we could have shared with, but we didn't kind of share with because... The fresh oil wasn't there. Prayers, we could have prayed because we didn't. We didn't pray them because we didn't have fresh oil. Lives that we could have influenced and affected, but we didn't influence and affect them because we didn't have fresh oil. All kinds of things in life that we could have done. If only we'd have had fresh oil. And that's why. It's fresh oil that enables you to take all the opportunities that kind of are opened up to us. Powerful verse 12. But he answered and said to them, Assuredly I say to you, I do not know you. Now that word there, no, doesn't mean I don't know you as such. It means I didn't know you in the place of intimacy. We weren't connected together. There was no connect. The, the connection wasn't there. And I think what fresh oil does is this. It enables you to be continually connected to him. And Jesus says to keep that connection going, 
It says, verse 13, Therefore, watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. In other words, he's saying this, keep connected to me. How many realize he's the source of the oil, if you see what I mean? So if I keep the connection to him, oil is going to just continually flow to me. It's when I break the connection. It's when the intimacy isn't really there, that the connection isn't flowing. But as I connect myself to him who's the source, then the oil is going to flow, and I'm going to have that vibrancy, I'm going to have that newness of fresh oil. I wrote this down. One moment with fresh oil achieves more than months and years without it. Let me close by just sharing that kind of, I suppose, story that happened to us. When we were in Liverpool, we inherited such a, it was a hard, really hard situation there. there was, I remember my first Sunday, two ladies were fighting at the communion table. <laughs> I know mean, that's not good. They were f eating each other, fighting at the communion table the first Sunday we were there. Remember that? And there was a lot of fighting, a lot of striving, a lot of struggling between the... In fact, the pastor that I followed was actually being sued by people in the church. He had a, he had a, they were actually suing him for detrimental character. They were suing him. And so it was a kind of... And he was so overwhelmed by it, he actually tried to take his life. That's I'm talking about. That's what is a hard thing. And during those years, we moved house four times. My mom died. We had just absolute... I mean... We had evangelists after evangelists come on, and we had, we had some of the biggest known We had all kinds of known evangelists who came in. One guy came, and during that week, we had 90, commi 90 commitments. I thought, 90 commitments, it's going to be amazing. The following Sunday, not one person came. And there was all, we tried everything we knew what to do, and there was all this kind of, all this kind of stuff going on. And we were worn out, we were tired, we were totally weary. And I remember just crying out to God, that prayer, God, I'm just so worn out. I'm so broke and I'm so tired. Please, fresh oil. Now, that was just during the year, for those who remember, that, that was the year that kind of Toronto broke out. And during that year, we'd actually gone to a meeting, I think that, that week, hadn't we, where John Arnott, you may remember, is one of the catalysts of, 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 of the Toronto, was prayed for us. And the following Sunday, we went back to church and we just did service as normal, if you like. And I always remember suddenly these, I said, I just resolved this, did anyone prayer, not really believing, you know, would anyone would. Do anyone prayer? I remember two teenagers, two young girls, maybe 14, 15, they came out. They just came out for prayer, nothing special. And suddenly they just began to, just began to cry a little bit. And they began to cry. And as people, people began to stand up, and suddenly it was like this hand went. We didn't pray for anybody. It was like this hand went like this. And people just fell to the floor. There was a lady there who had breast cancer, was healed right immediately. Another one who had actually lived, I think, lived, I think she was probably about 70 at the time and lived to in her 90s. Uh, there was another guy who had Crohn's disease was, and his stomach was, he was healed in a moment. It was just, it was pandemonium. We were walking over, people were shaking. It was just, it was almost like I was just standing there, just looking what was going on. It was like, it was just, you, you, you had no power over it, no control over it. It was just flowing. In other words, and for years and years and years, I tried everything I knew without any success whatsoever. But just one moment of anointing and everything was changed forever. Isn't that awesome? It's amazing what the fresh oil of God can do. He can do more in a moment that we could never do in a lifetime. The only requirement, really, I said, it's not your gift, it's not your ability, it's not your talents. The real issue is fresh oil. Fill me, touch me with fresh oil. Let's just stand with him right now. I just want you to lift your heart to the Lord today. And just let him come. Maybe you, maybe you feel great at this moment, but no matter how much oil you have, I mean, I'm glad that it's without, there's no limit to, 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 to how much we have. 
We constantly need a fresh touch of oil. We just need it just for life, really. We need it for just day-to-day -day situations, day-to-day -day living. We need fresh oil. If you could live it by yourself, what was the purpose of the Holy Spirit? And every moment, every day, God wants to pour fresh oil on you because you need it. Every single day you need fresh oil. And maybe here today you just feel weary like me. You felt tired and worn out. Just the batterings of life and you just are struggling right now. I tell the answer this morning is fresh oil. Fresh oil is the answer. I just, if you're able, why don't you just open your hands to the Lord right now. So these hands are open, Lord. And they need fresh oil. I feel dry. I feel weary. I need fresh oil. From what I'm facing in my life, Lord, I need fresh oil. I need a fresh touch from God. I'm so tired of struggling and striving in my own power and strength. But I just ask you, Holy Spirit, I open my heart to you now, Holy Spirit. Touch me with fresh oil. Touch me. Just spend, I just, that's the music, but just spend time with Jesus. Asking him to touch you with fresh oil. You don't really need someone to lay hands on you. The only hand you need is the hand of the Lord. Just as that music plays, just say, Lord, fill me today. Fill me with fresh oil. How I need it. I need it so much, Lord. Fill me. Fill me with fresh oil. Fill me. I just that in a few moments. I just want you to spend time with Jesus. We don't look to man, it's to Jesus. He's the anointer. He's the anointer, he's the baptizer of the Spirit. He's the anointer. He's the one who anoints you with fresh oil. So, Lord, I offer these hands today. Touch them with fresh oil. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place today. And Holy Spirit, we come to you today and our heart cry is touch us with fresh oil. We, we honestly today admit our need. We admit our own powerlessness. We admit our weakness. We admit our our vulnerabilities, and we come to you today, and we say, Lord, we need oil. We need that fresh oil. I pray today upon each of our, my brothers and sisters and upon myself today that you would pour fresh oil. Let it just saturate every part of our being. Let the oil come in strength and power. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Fill us anew. Refresh oil. Touch us, Lord. How we need a fresh touch from you. Touch us afresh. Touch us anew, we pray. Oh, Jesus. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. You know, some of you might be feeling tingling right now in your hands. I'm just feeling something like always. Oh, so sometimes there's a weightiness that comes on the hands, just like a weightiness that comes. And I found that happen. I felt like a weightiness on my hands, just like a weightiness coming. Or you may find some moisture, something flowing into your hands. Sometimes the Holy Spirit just manifests Himself in that way. Just let it flow in you. Just go with that flow. Some of you may feel you want to shake. Whatever it is, just go with the flow. Don't resist it. Just go with that flow. Just go with that flow, whatever it is the Lord's doing. Just let him do it. Don't resist it. Just go with it. Go with the flow, as they say. Just go with it. Just go with it. They breathe. Some of you feel like a breath breathing on your life right now. What's the feeling, a warmth, the heat? Some feel like a heat going through your hands. 
So you just feel there's a movement, your body feels to be moving and different things. Don't resist it, let it come. Just say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you now. You know, we could rush this, but we don't want to. We just want to spend a few moments. Because in these moments, Jesus can do more in a moment than anything in my sermon can do. Any, anything anybody else can do. He can do more in a moment than anybody else could do in a lifetime. He can touch you in a way that nobody else can. You just got to let him come and not resist him in any way. Let him flow into your life. Let him touch you. If it's healing, reach out to him. Say, Lord, today... I need an anointing of healing upon my life. Some of you need a joy. Some of you need an all change of joy. Let that joy bubble up outside of you right now. Let the joy of the Lord just be your strength. Let all the kind of heaviness go and let the joy of the Lord just flood your being. The joy. The joy of the Lord which is just incredibly empowering and strengthening. Some of you, you know, some of you are saying, Lord, I, I want you to use me in this week. Give me a fresh touch so I can touch people, so I can touch others today. People need a touch from you. There's people I'm surrounded with who need a touch from you. Touch me so I can touch them. Holy Spirit, we just thank you today for every life and every heart that you've touched. And I pray, God, that you would continue to move, continue to touch, continually pour yourself out upon every heart and every life. Be, a, be our priest today. Anoint us, we pray, afresh and anew. Anointing fall on us, O oh God. Fall on us in power and strength. Give us your strength. Give us your joy. Give us your power. Give us your fresh touch. Jesus. Just say Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just feel the Lord saying to you today, don't strive. Don't strive, don't strive, don't strive. Just relax. Just rest. Don't strive, just rest. Just let go of all your striving and just rest. Just rest. Some of us need a good rest in the Lord, a good rest in the Holy Ghost. A good, oil, a good oil change. Let all the striving just cease and just rest with Jesus. Just rest in his presence. David says one moment, one day in the presence of the Lord is worth a thousand elsewhere. One moment with Jesus changes your life forever. Oh, yes. Anyone need healing today? I just feel a, a real tingling in my hand. That's usually a sign of healing anointing. Anyone need healing today? I'm not going to, I'm just going to stay where you are. I'm just going to come to you. Anyone need healing? Anyone else today? 
Okay, I just want to just come and talk. Okay. In the quiet, in the stillness, I know that you are God. In the sea.